Let's start with a short reading. What? What I'm going to do is I'll first record the information in my Google file, or rather do a reading here on the Google Sheets file. The reading I'm going to do, if you look at my file here, you'll see there's a small sheet here called config. In the config, that's where I'll put the format for my output photo. How do I want to see it? The photo, do I want it to be horizontal or vertical? For example, here, I can specify if I want the photo to be 16.9 or 916, so that's important, it all depends. Is it going to be for a short, or is it going to be for a video? And then, the model. The model, I use VE3 fast. Why? Because it's the fastest one that can generate good quality videos, but doesn't cost much. So, that's kind of it. Here's a little file called config, so my system here and the other one, because I want to configure it only once, I don't want to have to go into the code and change it every time, so what it's going to do is just read the config, you'll see, and it will return to me the information that exists in my configuration, so it's just that. That's basically the task to do here. Now I'm going to create what's called the plant master, so the plant master. This is, in a way, all the information I want to create so that I can send it to my video generator so it can execute it. That means here, the description, the lighting, the environment, the elements to use, the subject, the production or the product, and actually the effects. So all this information and even the audio, all of it is created with what's called a base prompt. And now we have our agent. So here it's an agent where it will actually Try to turn this photo into a UGC style photo. So where we're going to create a truly realistic video, it's as if this person is actually going to try. So for example, to give their opinion or to explain some information. So UGC stands for user generated content. It's simply content generated by users where they give their opinions. So let me remind you, IE3, actually it's the model from Google DeepMind. It's designed to transform either text into video or an image into a video. So that's basically what it is. So what are we going to give it? Quite simply, we, we're going to give it the description provided by the user and the analysis of the image. And so that's basically what it's going to start doing. And then that's how it starts. And afterwards, its task is simply to create the prompt for me, along with the scenario, which will help me work with VO3. So, all of this script, of course, is available in the documentation I provided, and its purpose is to create the scenario for me. So, it's going to be a special prompt. So, as you can clearly and distinctly see here as well, I have utilized the powerful Think node to thoughtfully add a little bit of additional detail and complexity. The reflection. And now we're going to try to run, actually, to have this agent execute in order to create the perfect prompt. So now, let's run it. This, of course, is the prompt. You can adapt it to the type of video you're going to create. Personally, I created the videos in UGC mode, but if you want to create other types of videos that explain phenomena or videos that tell stories, in any case, everyone can tailor this workflow to their own style. So, for me, we'll just run it. With this method, we're going to request the execution of this node. You'll see that the agent calls on the model, and it will follow the master print format so it can give me a complete scenario. With description, lighting, events, ideas, and everything. Afterwards, of course, there's the possibility to tailor it with my own brand. Imagine I wanted to talk only about Dr. Faraz. So here is actually the final print. And also, it gave me a little title for this print, like this. But after the title, if you are going to share it on social media later, you might need to add a title. A more suitable one, actually, and not just the video title. You need to put a title that will work for YouTube SEO. And all of this, actually, what you're seeing right now is the final print with the effects, with all the information. Now, what are we going to do with this print? Of course, we'll need to format the print. So here, it's just a bit of cleaning up so that it comes out like this. Actually, in this way, it's a JavaScript that will format it a bit, for example, here. This is just the format I want to use. But of course, this data is already in my files configuration, Excel. This is just to give it a bit of formatting type to apply. So, as a result, I'm going to execute this format. So it's the node that will be formatted. And now we're going to use VE3.
So to use VE3, I can actually still work with full if I want, because it also offers VE3. But for me, I switched to using it. Actually, this interface from this tool, so KIE, so my AI, why did I choose this platform? Because it's really, in terms of pricing, it's slightly cheaper than full. That's one thing. And the second reason is that it's much easier to use, and I really like this interface, which is very well designed. So with version 3, I can click, and it gives me the option to generate a system. Here, for example, I have 1,000 credits. When you create an account, it gives you a few credits so you can make your first videos. And then it gives you, in terms of pricing actually, creating videos with Fast, for example, with version 3. How much does it cost for each video? And that's very, very interesting. So, so it's able, of course, to give you extraordinary quality by using, of course, the latest technology. With 3, 2, so Google, DateMind, okay, so for me, it's simple. You come here. You just have to create your API key, all right? So that's normal. So you come here and click to create your key. Now, a very important side note, the same thing applies. Here, when you enter your API, be careful. You must put the word bear before the API key. That is B-E-A-R. You have to put it, then you add a space. If you don't do that, your system won't work. So here, look, if I go in here, I have to put it before. So here. The API key, I should put that word, otherwise it won't work. And especially with the space so the system functions properly. So here, what is it going to receive as input, as information? Well, quite simply, it will receive the prompt that was generated by the AI agent. It will also take from my configuration the model I am going to use and the aspect of the video output. And here, you need to find, of course, the image that was generated by NanoBanana. So now, it has all this information, it's ready to be executed. So now let's try clicking on execute and see what the result is. So the result is success. So at this point, it has just launched my request, but be careful, we'll still need to wait a little while here. Here, I think I'll set that up, 20 seconds. But then it all depends on the complexity of your work or the length of your video. Let me remind you that for view three, there are a lot of parameters you can set I've tried to simplify all that for you by putting everything in the documentation. I'll just include the relevant information. You'll see, I can choose the model, the watermark, if I want to add my logo to the videos by default. These are the basic settings I can use with View 3, and everything is explained in the documentation that you'll find here. So, even for narration, it tells you that it only supports English. So as a result, we can't enable the multilingual system right away. But still, you'll find all the information, the settings to configure and develop in the system if you want to go a bit further. So now I'm going to check and see if my video has been processed or not. So now I'm going to go to V3. We'll go to Log. Here, we'll click on View 3. So there you go. It's working, so it's not finished yet. So I let it run for 20 seconds, and here I'm going to execute so I can test right after 20 seconds if the system has finished creating my video. And there you go, it's done. So I can see the result here, or I can simply come here and run a simple HTTP request here. So you'll see it's just a simple HTTP request. That's where I'm going to retrieve the video, but of course I need to be logged in with Kai I. Why? Because it's not just anyone. No one else can download my video, so they need to have authorization and they'll be able to see this authorization. Here, I'm still logging in, so I execute, and now it just gave me the information. If I scroll down a little bit, I can actually find the video. All right, let's thoroughly test this out and carefully observe what precisely transpires. Actually, we are going to endeavor to play this particular video together right now. So I'm going to copy it, download it, and we'll watch it together. Honestly, the result is perfect. So here, when you have the video, you get the idea. Actually, it understood my request where I want to have a system here that does modeling and so on. There you go, with a little support, whether it's inside the image, which is now there and available. And in fact, it follows my system. Maybe I can. Actually, I can send the request and ask, for example, if this person can advertise for me, for example, for my training program. 
and I think it will be able to make the right presentation. So that's the system. And that's more or less the result of the video. So here, if I come here, I'm going to create a caption so I can share this on social media. So now, look, if I click open. So of course here, I'm simply going to ask it to create for me. Actually, a title. And a description, or rather, we give it the title and I want it to generate a short description for me. There you go, with all due respect. So now, I run the system. It will try to generate the information for me in Kent. This is the caption I'm looking for, and I want it to be saved. And of course, now I run this step so that it gets saved. Actually, also on Nano Banana here, on my file. So if I go to the description, so now, let's go to... Just like this, there you go. So, look here. I actually have the link to the video. Here I actually have the title, and here I have the description, which I can add with the hashtags and everything else needed. It tells me that it has been written, because I always set the status so I can know where I am in the process. And that's what's important. Now, we're going to work on what we call notifications. So, notifications. Here we're going to run it. It's going to send me a little message on Telegram to let me know. Here is the video that was sent. And also, there's something nice here. So, it can even send me the video. So here, I'm also sending the video directly so that it gets uploaded and I can watch it. So, automatically, when I activate my workflow, I send the photo, the image, and then it actually gives me the result. What we're going to try to look at now is this part here, which is the part I'm really interested in. It's about how I use Blotter and everything so that it can distribute all this on social networks. And that's what's really, really impressive, actually, in the system. I'll show you right away the Blotato part. Now I'm going to use the node called Blotato. Here, this node simply allows me to send all my posts, all my videos to all the networks. It's very interesting. You just need to connect once here and you'll find all your networks that are connected. There you go. All that's left to do is right here. You'll see there's a node called Blotato. Of course, you needed to have already created the account. I'll put the link in the description so you can access it directly with Plotter It Out. And of course, you can try it out using my link. This actually allows you to access it here and there. There will be two actions. Actually uploading the image and then creating the post. Uploading the image is this one. It's simple. Image or video. So just upload media. So here I'll actually put the video and the system. It will upload this video either here or to the Plotter It Out servers. So I send the video directly that was generated by View3. So here, I take it from here, look. Actually, I take it from there, here, that's it, the one I downloaded. And there you go, I send it here. Once I receive the video, Blotato will save it on its end. And here, I have nine networks. Of course, you're not going to publish on all nine networks. So I always deactivate them. And I choose the network I want to use to send. Imagine I want to send it with YouTube. I activate it. Then I click here. Of course, it will already receive the title, and more importantly, the content, the URL of the video to upload. And this is the title. And of course, you can set it to private, or simply public, or maybe even unlisted. So you choose, and you can even do what was mentioned. Scheduling, that's for programming the sending, and that's great, that's what I love. Actually, with this system, I can really schedule things, it's very simple. So for me, what I'm gonna do is, I can already run this one. Look, we're gonna run it and you'll see the system will already upload the image. Once it's uploaded, it will send it here. So everything is fine now. So if I go here and blotter it all, I'll go to the section. Published post. If it's been added, you'll see that it will appear here. So as long as it hasn't appeared yet, I can refresh the page. I have to wait a little bit. So as soon as it's published, I'll see it here. There, perfect, and I can even click on view to see it. Let's do even better. We'll just go here, we'll refresh, and this page, that's working. YouTube, actually. Okay, and there you go. It's being uploaded. That's great, and it's really very fast. Imagine if you have a lot of social networks. You don't need to open LinkedIn separately, Instagram separately. No, no, you don't need to open each one. Actually, with the system, you just need to click here. So I think the parts are in shorts, because it detected that it's vertical in 9x16 format. So it goes directly here and it's set to private mode. That's normal. When I click here, I see the title that was created, the description was done, and here's the video. It's ready, and that's what's really impressive. That's what I really like. Actually, with this extension, you can of course do it on Instagram, on X, on LinkedIn, TikTok as well. So here I open TikTok, look, and there you go. I send the title. 
And because we just need to caption the media, you don't need a title on TikTok. And then that's it. You actually choose your URL. So for TikTok, of course, you first had to connect it here on Blotate. Otherwise, it won't work. And you have the API here so you can create or generate your API. Really, it's a very interesting system, very easy to set up. And that's what I recommend to you. I'll put the link in the description. So there you go. My system is ready. What's left to do? It's simple. I want to send myself right now. I can upload a status. So here, what I actually want is just to check to make sure we haven't messed anything up here. Everything's fine. There you go. Here, this is the status. I want it to be purple a chouette. So now let's run it. And there you go. So now normally it's published. So I can know and understand where we are in terms of work. And at the end, I can even send myself a little notification on Telegram to let me know it's published. There you go. So now you've seen everything from A to Z, how I set up this workflow. You have the JSON file and you were able to work with it. So now I'm going to give you a little gift because not everyone stays until the end. It's really those who downloaded, who watched, who wanted to understand, who wanted to see the system. And that actually deserves a little gift.